Hi, hello, three-day diet friends. Sarah here with The Holy Mess, and it is Sunday night, and we are checking in about meal prep. How did it go today? Did you do your meal prep? As you're coming in and joining me in the comments, let me know. Did you do your meal prep? How did everything go? Do you have any questions, any concerns about everything, anything? We are starting the three-day diet tomorrow. Tomorrow is day one. So um, tell me about how you're doing. How did the meal prep go? Do you have everything ready to go? Do you still have some things that you need to prepare? How are you feeling as we get ready to start day one? Are you excited? Are you feeling a little bit nervous? Are you feeling prepared? I was telling my daughter, I actually really enjoy doing meal prep. It feels so good to have everything done and plus to like front load that work. Like I, I did a load of dishes. I have another load of dishes. I'm, my sink is right over here sitting in the sink to do. So it's like kind of a bummer, but then it's done. Dinners are ready. Lunches are ready. So much of it is already prepared and you're ready to go. So um, check in in the comments. Let me know. How did your meal prep go? Are you feeling ready to go? Are you excited? Did you try anything? Our family actually had some of the chili and the vegetable soup tonight for dinner. It was really good. So I'm already looking forward to eating those during the next three days. As you're coming in and joining me in the comments, and I'll answer any questions that you have. I see we've got a question or two coming up. I am curious, what are some things that you have done in the past to lose weight? Have you done various things to lose weight? Have you done um, counting calories, Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem, Jenny Craig, medically supervised, OptiFast, um, are you doing those things now? What are you doing or what have you done in the past to lose weight? Um, I know that some of you have been following me for years and know my story. Thank you so much for following along. Some of you um, are brand new. Maybe you saw my story in Women's World Magazine or a friend recommended, hey, you should try this three-day diet. Maybe you came to the Holy Mess because you were looking for a Weight Watchers recipe and Google sent you my way. Um, but just to tell you a little bit about me, um, I have been overweight really for as long as I can remember. Um, looking back at pictures from the time that I was three years old, I was overweight um, really for as, almost as long as I can remember. Binge eating, overeating, sneaking food, um, always being heavier than my peers, oftentimes being the heaviest kid in gym class. And, um, you know, plus sizes weren't so much a thing then, being the one that like the uniform didn't fit, um, you know, my thighs rubbing together and chafing, and um, all my family was overweight. Both of my parents were overweight. They're now both gone and both died of complications, really, of, of their weight. Um, and even my extended family, um, like all of us were, um, were overweight, like looking at pictures of like family get togethers and picnics. So this has been a part of my life for a very long time. And I would, I could lose weight. Um, I would lose weight. I would go on diets. A lot of times as an adult, it was Weight Watchers and I would join, I would lose sometimes as much as 40 or 50 pounds, but I would always gain it back. And when the pounds come back, they always bring friends. So I would end up heavier than ever to the point that I was over 250 pounds um, when I was in my early 30s. And at that point, I knew, I knew I could go back to Weight Watchers or I could count calories and I could lose weight for a while, but it was like, I gotta step off the crazy train. This is crazy. I can't keep losing this weight, regaining it and trying to lose it again because that is so painful. That is so hard. I remember going to a church event at a church, my husband's pastor, where we had served a number of years ago. And when I left, when we left that church, I had lost about 50 pounds with Weight Watchers, and when we went back, I had regained all of it, plus some. And just that feeling of knowing that everybody would know that I had regained this weight, I was heavier than I'd ever been, it's such a, it's such a painful um, experience. And so the final time that I lost over 100 pounds, I knew I had to do something different, and so I went to therapy. And if you want more details about that, I've written some things on my website. You can just go, you can just type in holy mess, 
You can go to Google and type in holy mess therapy for weight loss, or you can go to my website and there's a search bar at the top and read about that if you're interested in that, or you can email me. Um, but um, I knew that I had to change my thoughts. I had to change my thoughts, my emotions, how I dealt with my emotions, um, how I managed my life with food. And so that's what I did. So I went to therapy and um, I did go back to Weight Watchers. At that time, the online program was brand new. That tells you how far back we're going here. Um, it's been about 20 years now. And um, along with the therapy, then I was able to use that system. I like the point system. I don't think it's the only way to lose weight, but I think it's a great one. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I like to make it like a game, like how much food can I get for my points? And that was before there were all the zero point foods the way there are now. Vegetables were the only zero point food when I first started Weight Watchers. Well, and actually when I first started Weight Watchers, it was the exchange system. Now there's zero point foods. If you're just joining us, I see a bunch of you are coming in and joining us. First of all, let me know how did meal prep go for you? Are you ready to go for tomorrow? And second, in the comments, tell us what are some things that you have done over the years, if you have, to lose weight. We're just sharing about that and I'm sharing more of my story. Um, I really had to learn to manage my emotions, emotional eating. I was very driven to food. I was a very strong binge eater. I would binge um, thousands of calories. I would eat whole cartons of ice cream, whole packages of cookies. I would drive through and um, get fast food and eat it in the car on the way home. And then I would eat dinner with my family and pretend I never did that. I would hide things. I didn't want my husband to know. And so I would bury the wrappers in the bottom of the garbage and then I'd go and rebuy it. Um, so I had a very serious eating issue. So if I can do this, you can do it. I am here to tell you that it is absolutely possible. God has brought so much good in my life. He has brought me so far. I have so much food freedom that I never had before. And that's why I want to share this with you. Um, I, I, it's just a, it's a thankfulness for what God has done in my life. And then I want to share that with other people. I also want you to know, I'm not perfect <laughs> with food. I'm laughing because I'm so far from perfect. You guys, I still mess up all the time. Um, I still overeat. I still eat junk food. I still eat food that is not on my plan. I still eat way past fall. Um, you know, there's times I really, really mess up with food. And I share that with you because I want you to know there's not some... At least for me, there has not been some magical arrival. This is an ongoing process. I'm still learning. I'm still learning how to manage food. I'm still learning how to manage my emotions. I'm still learning things that work really well for me and things that don't work for me. And the, one of the biggest things I do is I just get back on track. I get right back on track. Um, in the 30-day weight loss challenges that I run, I teach a specific um way to get back on track. It's B-A-C-K and there's something for each letter. So um, that's something that I'll be focusing on in our next weight loss challenge, which I'll tell you more about in a little bit. But um, the main thing is just get back on track. That is one of the biggest differences I had the final time that I lost weight compared to all the other times. Because what would happen is I would start Weight Watchers. I was like the Energizer Bunny. I was all excited. You know, I'd look up all the points. I'd find all the foods. I was all into, you know, um, at that time the internet was sort of new. Message boards, forums, you know, like, oh, people said you could get, you know, these fudge bars for two points. And so I was all into that. But then I'd start to slip and not eat foods that weren't on my plan and not track. And then I'd have a weigh-in where I didn't lost any weight. And then I'd have another weigh-in where I actually gained weight. And I'd kind of go back and forth and play with it for a while. And then it was like, well, why am I paying Weight Watchers just to gain weight? There's no reason for that. I know how to do this on my own. So I'd tell myself I would do it on my own, which how long does that last? Has anybody done this like me? That doesn't last very long. So I would quit. And then soon enough, I was back in my old patterns and, you know, regaining the weight. And that's not what I want for you. That's not what I want you to do this time. I want you to be different from me. I want this to be different from you. You know, I um, was actually talking to a lady at church this morning. She 
she um, follows um, the things that I do. She's in our Faithful Finish Lines um, membership, which is a Christian weight loss program I lead together with my business partner, Becky. She She's in this group. I don't want to say her name just in case, but she's lost over 50 pounds. She's almost at her goal weight. And, um, you know, she said it started with the three-day diet because I started with that and I just kept going. And so I want to encourage you that this can be the starting point for you. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to mess some things up. Maybe during these three days, maybe not during these three days, but eventually you're going to fall off the wagon. The most important thing is to just get right back on track, get on back on track fast as soon as you possibly can. I try to set a goal for myself, never eat two off-plan meals in a row. So do I always do that? No, sometimes, you know, I don't, but that's my goal. So I'm trying to look at it as, okay, I slipped up, I ate ice cream, I ate chocolate chips while I was standing up at the freezer. I did that the other day. I ate peanut butter with the spoon in the pantry. That's another one that I have a tendency to do. But now I can get right back on track. I got right back on track. That was in the afternoon. I got right back on track at dinner. And I kept going. Now in the past, what I would have done is mowed my way through dinner, eaten tons of snacks that night. And this is sad to say, but depending on what day of the week it is, maybe not get up back on track for several days. Like if that was like Friday, I'd be like, oh, I'll get back on track on Monday. And then make the weekend this whole entire binge fest of I've got to get everything in. But you can do a lot of damage over the course of a weekend, or at least I certainly can. So get back on track as fast as you can. Give yourself the goal, never eat two off-plan meals in a row. In fact, would you type that in the comments? Never eat two off-plan meals in a row. If you use that as a guideline, you will be amazed at how quickly you get back on track. Well, I see a bunch of you are sharing. So let me just see. I'm going to scroll through your comments here. Oh my goodness, you guys are so awesome. People are still preparing. Patricia says she's so excited and will be awesome to have it all ready. Margaret, you're behind in prep. That's okay. Just do what you can. Um, prepped and ready. Jen, Jennifer saying she's done Weight Watchers. Michelle says everything. I hear you. Margaret has done Weight Watchers. Oh, and she did Faithful Finish Lines. That's so awesome. Kathy's down 25 pounds from this time last year, counting calories. Way to go. Nancy loves the soups. That's awesome. Jenny's here. Um, Nancy, oh, so great to see all of you. Every diet out there, I totally hear you. Totally hear you. Ready to go. I've been on Weight Watchers, emotional eating as well as when I'm stressed. Yes. Emotional eating, stress eating, boredom eating, celebration eating, all of those are forms of emotional eating and something that I teach about quite extensively because I have learned so much in that area of my life. Okay, so um, we talked about meal prep. Um, I could talk about the emotional eating for hours, but the main thing I just want you to know with all of this is that you're not alone. You're not the only one. We're in this together, and these three days can really set you up for some great success. You're going to learn so much over these next days. Yes, you're going to lose weight, but more than that, it's going to give you the kickstart you need to keep going. Um, the, um, I would love to hear if we have any plant-based people too. If you did your meal prep today, how did that go for you? We're going to look at the menus a little bit. If you're doing the original plan, most people are doing the original plan. That's great, but definitely take a look at the plant-based. I would encourage you because that's three more days worth of meals that maybe you don't want to eat the whole day plant-based, but maybe you just want to use some of the recipes. They're awesome recipes super filling. We took a group through um, the plant-based challenge. There were about a hundred um, women who did it like as a test run at the beginning of December. Some of you I think are here. If you were here, will you tell us in the comments? And one of the big things they talked about over and over is like, I can't believe how much food I got to eat because plant-based foods are naturally lower in um, calories and calorie density um, for the most part. Um, you get to eat a lot of volume of food, so it's really filling and satisfying. And a lot of carbs, which, hey, who doesn't love carbs? I love carbs. So um, tomorrow we begin. So let's look just really briefly at our plans for tomorrow. So if you are on the original plan, I'm looking at that. For breakfast, you're gonna have three eggs and salsa. For lunch, you're gonna have the turkey chili and an apple or some other fruit. For dinner, you're gonna have tilapia, salmon, or shrimp. And then you can have two cups of vegetables. I suggested Brussels sprouts or asparagus, but do you know what works for you. 
Your first snack is two cups of fruit, and then your second snack is two cups of the vegetable soup. And then for the plant-based plan, your day one is the Tropical Blast Oatmeal. I'm gonna be really curious to see what you think about that because there's vegetables in there. That's what a lot of people were talking about um, when we did the test run. Uh, and I really do put vegetables in my oatmeal and I swear you can't taste it. Um, for lunch, they have the vegetarian chili, which is very similar to the original chili, but instead of meat, it takes whole grains. And then for dinner, you have tofu vegetable stir fry with brown rice. This is another one a lot of people are like, oh, tofu, I don't know, but it's actually really delicious if you cook it right. And then your snack one is two cups of vegetables and your snack two is banana ice cream, which a lot of people really like the banana ice cream. Even if you're doing the original, definitely check out it's banana nice cream on my website. It's so easy to make, it's so good. It's really delicious. All right. Let's talk a little bit about food cravings. In the comments, tell me what are some foods that you crave? So how I would describe a food craving, there's a lot of different ways you can think about it, but it's foods, well for me it's foods that call my name. <laughs> I can be working, I'm busy with something, and it's like, it's like the ice cream is calling me. Sarah, you need some of this. It's foods that you'll go out of your way to get, um, you'll find yourself going back, like you'll say you're gonna have one serving and then you have two servings or three servings. It's foods that, um, you know, just especially appeal to you. What are some foods that you crave? It might be foods you find yourself thinking about, maybe foods that are very easily triggering to you, like you see somebody else eating it, you smell it, you see a commercial for it, and you want to eat it. Those are all food cravings because it's a desire that comes up in the minute, not something that you've planned ahead for. So maybe you really do like ice cream and you're counting calories or Weight Watchers points right now and you plan in that you're going to have a serving of ice cream before bed, like the night before you plan that out or that morning you plan. That's not, and then you have it. That's not what I would consider giving into a food craving. That's a food that's really delicious, but you planned it. A food craving is when you like instantaneously want it in the moment. And a strategy that I teach, and I go into this much more extensively in my 30 day challenges, cause I do weekly, um, almost like a masterclass once a week there. I do exclusive videos for people who are in the challenges. Um, one of the concepts that I teach is toddler voice versus adult voice. So what I was just describing about food cravings, think about that. Doesn't it kind of sound like a toddler? Like just giving into the momentary temptation. You want what you want, what you want it. You kind of, your thoughts are kind of throwing a fit. Like give me the ice cream and give it to me now or, or, um, tempting you with things that aren't even logical. Like, oh, just have one handful of chocolate chips. Nobody will even know. Well, whether anybody knows or not, it's still gonna be on your body. The calories still count. All of those momentary things are our toddler brain, what I call the toddler brain, which is the primitive brain stem part of your brain that is driving you to food. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that primitive drive to food. All of us have it. It's part of how God designed our bodies to keep us alive. But we want to use the adult thinking part of our brain to make decisions about food, especially those of us who have food challenges, who are overweight, who are struggling with food. We want to make sure that we are making logical decisions that are best for our future. When you are following food cravings, you are not thinking about the future. You're thinking about this instant. You're thinking about how is that food going to taste in my mouth? You're not gonna think about future you who regrets it, who goes to bed with heartburn, who is like, oh, why did I do that again? I wish I hadn't done that. That's the adult part of your brain. So what you can start to do when you have food cravings is um, recognize who's talking and say, ask yourself, is that my toddler voice or my adult voice? If it's your toddler voice, it's not that you don't um, recognize it, it's legitimate. And sometimes our toddler voice tells us things that are quite legitimate but you wanna make decisions with the adult part of your brain, the part of your brain that can think ahead to your future that has goals, that has goals for you that you really want. So I like to say it's okay that you have your toddler voice, but you don't want the toddler driving the car. <laughs> the toddler can be in the back seat, chattering along, saying what she's gonna say, saying you need the chips, saying you need the ice cream, saying you need to go out to eat, saying you're too tired to cook, 
but the adult brain is who you want driving the car. So the next time that you're having some cravings, especially over these next three days, I want you to think about what does the adult me see, say? Okay, the toddler me might be saying, just have a handful of chocolate chips. Nobody will ever know. Think how good they taste right out of the freezer. They're so crunchy. That's my toddler voice. I don't know if your toddler voice says that, but that's what my toddler voice says. But the adult me says, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I just spent all day today meal prepping. I have been organizing this. I've been getting it together. I want to do this. I want to go on Thursday and weigh in and feel really, really good that I followed this plan. So let the adult part of your brain make the decisions over the next few days when you have those cravings. You don't need to beat yourself up about it. You don't need to say there's something wrong with you. You don't need to say you have no self-control. No, 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 none of that. You're just going to say, I'm going to make the decision based on my adult brain, not what my toddler brain wants in the moment. All right, so we are going to get started here soon. Oh my goodness, I love seeing all you guys' comments. Um, thank you. Mary says her story is so similar. Camilla says she's prepped and ready for Monday. Betty's telling us she's used Weight Watchers and Tops. Oh, Dr. Phil, I remember that. I had his book, First Place and Many More. Lori's here. Yep. Um, everybody's saying never eat two off-plan meals in a row. Good for you. Awesome, awesome, love it, love it. Never eat two off-plan meals in a row. Um, Camilla, something about the bundle and do not see the soup. Um, there is a vegetable soup, but are you doing the plant-based? If you're doing the plant-based, there's not a vegetable soup for that. Um, if you're doing the plant-based, um, that one just has the chili, but then the original plan has the vegetable soup in it, okay. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, at, it, Mary, is it ads candy diet? I actually haven't heard of that one before. Um, I would buy a box and then munch on several car caramels in a row. I could easily eat through an entire box. Oh, right. I'm like, yeah, candy. Um, yep. Sandy's here. She was in the three day plant based test. Um, and Helen is saying you probably like the plant-based and that's fine, but uh, good for you that you're trying it. Lee is here. Hey, Lee. She says too much food for sure on the plant-based, but I lost weight. Awesome. Elizabeth's doing the plant-based. That's so awesome. Julie asked, I do not usually eat breakfast. Is it okay? Yes, you can do what works for you. Um, you don't have to eat any of the foods at any one specific time. You don't have to eat if you're not hungry. You know, you can eat the snacks whenever you want. You can fit it in. I will say, I'm not one who says you have to eat breakfast. Some people just truly aren't hungry at breakfast and that's fine. But what I can tell you is that when I was heavy, I did not eat breakfast. And now that I'm at a healthy weight, I'm at my goal weight, I do. And what the difference was for me, this might or might not be true for you, but a lot of the women I've worked with can relate to this. I was a nighttime snacker, big time. And I know that a lot of you are because when I asked in this group, what's your biggest challenge? A lot of you said nighttime eating. In fact, there was one woman, I don't remember your name, but she said, if I could just not eat at night, like I would be skinny right now. I was like, oh girl, I so hear you. That was a huge issue for me for so long. And part of the reason why is I was a points hoarder or a calorie hoarder. I wanted to be able to eat a huge dinner with my family with seconds and thirds, and then I wanted to eat a bunch of snacks because that was how I relaxed at night. I loved to eat at night. And so I would not eat breakfast, and then I would eat a really, really light lunch, like a two-point lunch, and then um, by dinner, I was so hungry, I was starving because that was like 90% of my calories. So I'd eat dinner, and then I'd eat seconds, and then when I was putting dinner away, I would pick all the food off my kids' plates, and then I would eat snack after snack after snack in the evening, and then really, I'd basically blow my plan. So I had tons of calories right before I went to bed, got up the next morning, I wasn't hungry for breakfast because I'd eaten so many calories the night before, and then it all just started all over again. So I would encourage you, if you feel like that could be your pattern, to try try eating breakfast or at least try shifting your calories earlier in the day. A lot of us eat most of our calories at night, but your body doesn't need the calories then. You're probably mostly sitting. Um, you're probably not out doing a lot of exercise or physical activity. 
but during the day, you need it during the day. You're busy. Even if you're not like running marathons, you're up, you're doing stuff. Those of you who meal prep today, that burn calories, you're busy. You need to give your body food then. You know, sometimes if nighttime, is, if nighttime eating is an issue for you, if I was working with you as a coach, one of the first things I would look at in your food log is how many calories are you eating during the day? If you're eating a very small amount of calories during the day, it's like, boom, that's your issue. Before we can even work on any of the habit change, the emotional eating, any of those things, we have to get the calories dialed in or points. So try shifting more of your calories during the day. I know you're busy. That's okay. You can stop and eat. It does not take that long. Also, I think sometimes we're like, we say it's because we're too busy, but secretly we're trying to be good and not eat that much but that always backfires. Your body will always come in and those survival mechanisms will kick in. So if you are not eating enough during the day, oh, you will eat at night, you will binge, and then you will end up going over your calories because that's the way God designed our bodies to work. I have yet to meet anyone who could override that. That is such a strong, primitive urge that if your body is desiring and needs those calories, it will figure out how to get them. And our bodies drive us to the highest calorie foods in your environment. So that's why, notice when we talked about food cravings, think about what those calories, think about what those foods are. They're very calorie dense because your body is driving you, your body will always drive you to the highest calorie food in your environment. So if you have ice cream in the house, you're gonna want the ice cream. If you have chips in the house, you're gonna want the chips. If you have chocolate chips, you're gonna want the chocolate chips. If there's french fries, like your body is going to constantly drive you to those foods, even healthy foods. Um, nuts, peanut butter, those are a big one for me. Dried fruit for some people, trail mix, cereal. Those are all very concentrated calories and your body will continue to drive you to that, especially if you're not eating enough during the day. So that's why it's so important. And that's one of the things that some people learn with this plan. They eat breakfast and then they're like, I'm not even, if they don't normally eat breakfast, like I'm not even that hungry. I'm not that hungry for lunch. I'm not that hungry for snacks. I'm not that hungry before bed. I'm like, yeah, that's the whole point. That's what we're trying to teach you. When you give your body the nutrition that it needs throughout the day, you're so much more satisfied. Now, I'm not saying you won't still have cravings at night. You will, um, especially if this is new and you're shifting this, like you've been eating at night for years. It's gonna take some practice and it's gonna take some intentional effort. But let's set you up for success by getting the biological aspect right. So if you're feeding your body enough, it's going to make it so much easier to manage the cravings. And if you didn't eat enough during the day, it's kind of like, I, it, I don't want to say impossible, but it's going to be extremely difficult to manage cravings because then you're fighting biology. Your primitive body is trying to get you to eat at night, and then it's really, really hard to stop. And like we talked about in yesterday's video, the way our food is right now, it's different from any other time in history. We have access to basically limitless food in very concentrated calorie form. Nobody's really had that before. And if they did, they had to work for it. So the fact that we can go and pick up a handful of trail nuts, nobody had that option before. That's like, thou you can, you can, I can scarf down a couple thousand calories extremely quickly of like cereal or trail mix. Nobody really had that opportunity in the past. So that's why we really have to be careful and dial in some of these things like eating enough during the day so that you can set yourself up for success. Otherwise with the food landscape, the way that it is now, it's going to be really challenging. So, um, so that's part of why the diet is designed the way it is. And I do want to say too, again, I'm not a doctor. I am a person just like you who's lost a lot of weight. And the way that I develop these plans is just by how I eat. And I think that's why a lot of people like them too, is it's not some dietitian sitting in an office somewhere who knows the perfect plan. This is a plan that's based on what really worked for me and is working for me how I lost 100 pounds and how I'm maintaining 100 pound weight loss. But always check with your doctor. Check with your doctor, a nutritionist. Um, I'm not trying to give you medical advice. Do what's going to work for you. All right, I see so many good comments. I see some of your foods, right? Like crave salty things, chips and dip, ice cream, chocolate, bread, milk, pasta, salty, crunchy, right? Yep, see, this totally makes sense. 
I crave the heaviness of carbs, like bagels and cream cheese, angel food cake, cookies, right? Like everything totally makes sense when you look at this. These are foods that are designed to make you want to eat more of them. I mean, there are scientists that, you know, there are food companies that spend millions of dollars to make sure that that food is just the right combination to make it so tempting for you to eat and to keep eating and to buy more of it. And then think about what those are. Then you have your body's biological drive. Those foods are packed with calories, packed, very, very dense. So think about it like each bite you take is extremely high in calories. So um, with the plant-based, for example, there are a lot of carbs in this plan and people are quite surprised actually. Like I can eat oatmeal, I can eat baked potatoes, I can eat sweet potatoes, I can eat brown rice. Like how is that possible? Well, it's because those carbs are, first of all, they're cooked with water. So you have the water content, but those are actually relatively low in calorie density. So even like cooked brown rice, each bite is not that many calories. But then you compare that to like, let's say each bite is 10 calories. I don't really know, I'm just guessing. But then you compare that to like a Snickers bar. Each bite of a Snickers bar could be like 50 calories. So you have the comparison, you could eat a lot more brown rice, even though that might be what we would consider like, is that too many carbs? Is that high in calories? The calorie density of that is actually quite low compared to some of the junk foods that we crave and are so tempted to eat. All right, I'm gonna look at some more of your comments. Before I do that, I wanna make sure I share some reminders. I, um, I told you about the toddler and adult brain, and if you're interested in that, consider joining one of my 30-day challenges. We have another one coming up this spring. I'm gonna share more about that in the next couple of days. Um, and then yesterday we did the affirmation, I can do hard things. So I would love for you to type that in the comments. I can do hard things. When you have food cravings over these next three days, which you probably will, use the adult part of your brain to remind yourself, I can do hard things. And then another affirmation I'm going to give you for today, I will follow my food plan on Monday. Would you type that in the comments? I will follow my food plan on Monday. Say it tonight, say it before you go to bed, say it out loud, I will follow my food plan on Monday. Doesn't matter who's listening, who cares? I will follow my food plan on Monday. Then tomorrow morning when you get up, say I will follow my food plan on Monday. And you can say it to yourself at lunch, when you're driving and you see that restaurant that looks so good, when your husband's eating potato chips, you're gonna say, I will follow my food plan on Monday. You're using the adult part of your brain. If the toddler part of your brain starts tempting you, remember you want the adult part of your brain driving the car. I will follow my food plan on Monday. Um, a couple other quick reminders. Um, take pictures and share them with the group. It just makes it so much more fun. Take a picture of your breakfast, take a picture of your lunch, take a picture of your snacks and your dinner, share them in the group. Be sure to come to the group for support. Monday night, tomorrow night, I'll be here at 7 p.m. just like this, and we're gonna do a check-in, and you can tell me how you like the food, how it went, were you hungry, were you full, were you satisfied, what was challenging. You're gonna tell me that you followed your food plan, right? You're gonna tell me, I followed my food plan on Monday, and, um, and we'll talk about that. How, did you have temptations? Did you have cravings? Was that toddler voice talking to you? How did you use the adult part of your brain to overcome those food cravings? We will talk about that tomorrow night. And make sure you weigh yourself tomorrow morning before you eat or drink anything. If you want to do it naked in your bathroom, whatever works for you. The main thing I would say is just try to keep it consistent. So whatever you do to weigh yourself Monday morning, try to do about the same thing on Thursday morning, just so we can get an accurate you know, measure of what you did. But um okay oh so many good things here um i see you're talking about junk food yeah so um definitely this is going to help you um consider coming and joining me i have both faithful finish lines which is my christian women's weight loss program that i run with my business partner becky and the 30-day challenges we did two the Holy Mass 30 day challenges last year. We did a summer challenge and we did a fall challenge and we're gonna do a spring challenge. So, um, oh, those are so good. Those are so good. I'm in the group every single day for 30 days. I give you an action guide. Every Monday night we do a video where I teach on something. 
I teach extensively about junk food, cravings, emotional eating, menopause, weight gain, all that kind of stuff. And then one of the really big things about the 30 day challenges is that every single day you share a copy of your food log. So you have that accountability. And so many women have told me that's a game changer. So you'll definitely want to check out that. Um, Julie says, thanks for all the great tips. You're so welcome. You can all do hard things. You're going to follow your food plan on Monday. I love it. Awesome. Oh my goodness, you guys. Look at all this. You're going to follow your food plan. I love it. Wonderful. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up for today. We will be here tomorrow morning, right away, bright and early. You can start sharing photos of your breakfast. You're going to follow your food plan on Monday, right? I will follow my food plan on Monday and I'm doing it with you. I prepped all my food. I've got my chili ready to go. I've got my tuna salad ready to go. I did my salsa chicken and my vegetable soup. I'm following the original plan too. So whether you're doing the original or the plant-based, they both work great. Um, we are in this together. We're gonna share pictures tomorrow. We're gonna motivate each other. And then I will be back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. You can come to that video and tell me I followed my food plan on Monday. And if you find yourself with food cravings or feeling overwhelmed, then tell yourself, I can do hard things. That is the adult part of your brain overriding those toddler cravings. I can do hard things. You can do this, ladies. I am here with you every step of the way, and I will see you tomorrow. Let's do this. Bye.